You're at the Trumpet News Channel. How's it going, everybody? Let's see if we're live yet. Make sure my... There we go. We're starting off right. So what's happening, everybody? I just wanted to uh, give you guys a little news update. I guess there's really not major major news happening, but there's still... Every day there's something going on. So we're going to hang out and just talk a little bit, heart to heart. And I'll tell you what I think about a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> because it just seems like it's a bunch of nothing. A bunch of mind-numb robots walking around. I was looking at this uh, NPC meme. <laughs> it was like somebody had posted a thread on this, and I started thinking about it. But anyways, how's it going, everybody? Uh, did I put the news can I didn't put the campaign out there yet. Let me make sure I do that really quick. I don't think I clicked the button yet. Let's go ahead and do that. Bam it. Bam it, bam it. I mean, you know, make it, make it like bam. Remember that guy who used to do all the the cooking, and he would he would throw things when he cooked, and he would go bam. Well, who was the guy that did that? Do you guys remember the name of that guy that used to cook? It wasn't the Naked Chef. It was somebody else. If you hear my kids in the background, it's because I'm on the mic. They like to they like to talk when I'm on the mic. They like to yell and scream. So what's going on, everybody? Uh, just for waiting for everybody to get here before we get into it. And I really don't know what I'm going to be talking about yet, so we'll just kind of wing it like we always do. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, how's it going? Let's say hello to everybody in the, in the chat, in the house. Do we have okay, Mike? Does it sound okay? Good, good, good audio. It's raining. Stefan says... It's raining. Missy, Kim Ki Kim Miller. I was going to say Kim Killer. <laughs> it's like Kim Miller. You know, your K in the middle of your name is making it sound like that. That's the only reason. Kirk Fire, Psalm 1, Cindy Cindy Lynn, Jackie Evans, Kathleen, uh, James Rush, J uh, Lauren, Destination Anywhere. Hello, hello. Juanita. Good to see all you guys out there. Forrest. Forrest Gump. I mean, Forrest Curvello. How's it going, sis? Tammy, it's raining in Wisconsin. Are you kidding? You got the notifications. Smooch is awesome. Red Silk, what's going on? What's happening? Begley lost his mind. Really? What did he do now? <laughs> He's always losing his mind. You know, it's funny how... how Famous, you know, if you when you get a little famous or you get a little notoriety, a lot of people do that through very strange means. You know, have you ever heard the saying? There's there's no bad there's no such thing as bad press. You can do the craziest, outlandish things, and people will remember you just because you did something that got you in the news, and you're still famous. I mean, how many people got famous from doing really salacious and what's the word? Um, Oh, you know, it's just infamous. They become infamous. But still, everybody likes famous people for some reason. It doesn't matter what you do. Shoot, I might as well just start going crazy here. <laughs> UFOs are fake, Tammy says, or Psalm says. You don't, you think that? Oh, let's see. What do we got going on here? It's 103. Heidi, where are you at? You got to be somewhere in, in the desert, California. Where are you guys at? Where's everybody from? Let me see where y'all guys living. If you if you're in the, any different part of the country, just post the city. Just kind of kind of curious where everybody's from. If you're in another part of the world, you can post your country and or whatever province. <laughs> we call them cities here and states <laughs> here in the U.S. of A. Um, got a lot of people all over the place. Oh, look at this. Florida, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, San Diego, Florida, Marion, Virginia, Grando, Old Opry, New York, Cuba, Arizona, Poconos, Poconos, Aruba, Bariba, Perth, Australia. Woo, we got somebody in Australia. Uh, Oroville, somebody living under the dam. Man, that would be scary. The dam is a very scary place to be over there in Oroville. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that dam. And in spite of the fact that it hasn't gone yet, 
it still works. You know, I was looking at the the damn footage yesterday about two days ago. There's a lot of weird stuff still going on there. I mean, one of the gates just kind of opened up on accident. I don't know what happened. All this water started going down, and that wasn't a planned opening. It was just kind of like something went wrong with the gate or something. I don't know if they're doing tests on the gate. I don't know. It was very, very strange. You got a lot of workers up there looking over the edge, looking as the, as the water's coming out. It's kind of squirting out one of the gates, and they're kind of all standing on top looking down. You got all these workers. You kind of wonder, what's going on up there? Something, something fishy going on, and the water level keeps going up. So we only got about four or five feet to the top, and uh, they're saying on the news that they're not going to open up the gates because they're 15 feet below the top of the dam. That's what they said on the official news uh, the other day, mainstream, local mainstream news, which is not true because they're only five feet from the top or less than five feet. So why would they say 15 when they're only five? Anyways, a lot of people are wondering about this dam because there's so many problems with the actual dam itself because it's so old. You know, it's kind of like old and crickly. You get old and crickly. You got to have all kinds of maintenance. Otherwise, you're going to fall over and croak. So you got to make sure that you got all the newest technologies to make sure everything's okay. Repair that sucker. It needs to be internally looked at. That's why they got all this uh, equipment now to monitor it. Infrared and all the vibrations that they have. I forget what the sensors are called. But that dam is very old. And for anybody that's downstream, you might want to be concerned. The reason I say be concerned is because one of the foremost dam expert, well, actually, he's not a dam expert. He's a, he's a, um, oh, I forget the title. He's one of the foremost engineers that mon has mon been on major catastrophic failures of, of structures. And he was on the BP oil spill. I think he was on the uh, Challenger disaster. They, they, he's an expert in the field of what causes these catastrophic failures. And he was called out to the Oroville Dam. And he said, his name is Robert B, B-E-A. He's a forensic engineer, I believe. Uh, forensic engineer. I forgot the, the rest of his title. But, it's, you know, he's got a lot of credentials. He said that Oroville Dam could fail on a hot, sunny day. <laughs> That's how bad it is. And uh, if you ever want to see his official, you know, what what he officially says about the R about the Orville Dam, you might want to look him up. Robert B. Just put forensic engineer. You'll find him on you on a Google search. But anyway, I was kind of monitoring that. I don't have a whole lot to get into today, except for the fact that there's a lot of just regular news going on. We can kind of look at. I was looking at these uh, NP. NPC memes, compilation of NPC memes. It was kind of funny. I was watching. But, uh, yeah, what's going on? What's been happening? Iran's still kind of in the news a little bit there. We were kind of looking at some things with Iran. Uh, let me pull up some articles here. Jerusalem Post just stated that, let's see if I can pull this up here. that uh, the downing of the U.S. drone was a firm response, and it can be repeated if they choose. <laughs> this is what they're saying. So we've been putting on crippling sanctions, another executive order from President Trump just, I think it was today, crippling, extra piling on sanctions. The average person in Iran is now saying that it's breaking their bones. This is quote unquote from people that are within Iran. And it's usually just a rank and file average person like you and me that are feeling the sanctions. They're feeling the squeeze because it's all, it's affecting the whole of the country, their lack of uh, ability to, and they're really what the U S wants is they want the people to rise up and to re, and to revolt against the government. And so one of the quotes was that it's breaking our bones. This is what they've said. These are some of the quotes in Iran. It's sad, but that's what's happening. And you know that those types of sanctions are going to lead to some kind of response, possibly war. This is what the Iranian government has officially stated, is that if we do not lift sanctions, that there will be war. This is what they've said. 
This is kind of what happened during World War II when we put sanctions on, and they were crippling. We basically isolated Japan. And what did end up happening? Well, Japan looked at that as an act of war and attacked us at Pearl Harbor. It was a sneak attack. Some say in history, historians will say some that we probably should have known that it was coming. There's also some conspiratorial historians that will tell you that we knew it was coming and we wanted to get into the war and that was what we allowed. But anyway, whatever happened during Pearl Harbor, it was as a result of crippling sanctions. And that's exactly what's happening right now to Iran. So they are saying that they are going to have a firm response if this is repeated. And another thing they said, which I thought was interesting, I was looking at the forums, and they had said something about 35 people being on the plane, which the plane that was following the drone, there wasn't 35 people. There's just, uh, I think it was a Poseidon, and I think it had, it's a surveillance uh, military craft. And it has the capacity for, I think, nine or ten uh, military servicemen. And uh, there wasn't any, I don't, they don't know why they said 35, but I was thinking to myself, 35, they were thinking, they were saying that this plane that they could have downed, which had 35 passengers on it, uh, was not chosen as a target, but it was to send a message by taking down the drone that was right next to it. The 35, I think, represents, because they say that they can do, they could have taken down the other one. That's why President Trump said, it's a good thing that they did. there wasn't anybody on it. Remember, he, remember how Trump said that? It would have been a different story if there would have been some people on it. Well, you got the F-35s doing a bunch of stuff now, these brand new uh, fighter jets that we have. These F-35s, F-35, maybe they were talking about the F-35. It was maybe a coded kind of message. I think Iran is basically saying, hey, you know what? We'll take down one of your F-35s as well. We can do it. We have the technology. We have the capability to take down an F-35. Con Iran seems to be very confident. If you ask me, they seem to be overly confident in the way that they're approaching this big what they consider to be a paper tiger of the U.S. of A. I don't think we're a paper tiger now. I really do think that our military has been infused with all kinds of new life, new equipment, new technology. Under President Trump, it's happened very rapidly. But this is one of the drones that was taken out right here. Um, I was looking at some other articles here. Pompeo said yesterday, I think it was the day before, that I was going to do this uh, broadcast yesterday, but I got kind of behind. I got very, I got very uh, overwhelmed with a bunch of work, so I couldn't do what I wanted to do with you guys here. But I'm kind of coming back to do a refresh here. But we're going to go through that news from yesterday, and I'm going to kind of re rehearse some of the things that are happening now, as of today. Pompeo calls the drone map that Iran released childlike. I guess Iran had released a map and they basically showed all the information. This is in a, this is in a, an Iranian uh, website here, or it may not be Iranian. It may be just uh, Arabic. I'm not sure who owns this site, but it shows uh, the map that Iran released and I guess it's kind of like some doodling showing where the plane went and where the drone was when they shot it down, the coordinates. And there's a, there's obviously a different, um, you know, kind of um, explanation from, from Iran as opposed to where America says that this drone was. But, you know, from what it looks like to me, we could have very easily gone in there over on their territory uh, I was looking at um, this guy, Javar Zarif. He's a foreign minister of the Islamic Republic of Iran. And he shows a bunch of scribbling here. <laughs> uh, he says more evidence. And, and they're speaking in English, too. So I guess they want the English world to really read what they're saying. 
the Minister of Propaganda, I guess. It says, uh, more evidence, including encroachment of an MQ-9 spy drone on 526 speedboat purchases. Now, I've been hearing something about this a while back, about supposedly speedboat that speedboats that were purchased to mimic or to pretend to be Iranian in, uh, in a sense that they would be used to cause a false flag that we could then say Iran attacked us. And uh, cell phone calls attributed or planning to attribute ship attacks to Iran indicate that B team, and he, they call they call the B team they call it Benjamin Netanyahu, um, Bolton, who is the war hawk. Did you see what Trump said about Bolton today? Or I believe it was the other day, yesterday. Sunday he was being interviewed, and Trump said that Bolton was a war hawk and that he would go to war at a he would go to war anywhere he wanted. Trump was basically they say throwing him under the bus, but he didn't go along with his counsel on going to war with Iran and basically bas said that he's the type of guy that's going to be wanting to go to war wherever he can. He'd be at war with the world if he had an opportunity. Trump says that he, his administration is populated with both doves and hawks, and that's what they call a hawk, someone that is very inclined to conflict. So Bolton, the Israeli that he is, wants America to be in there, fighting the battles and getting in the mix and standing in front of Israel. So Israel doesn't have to put up and have to deal with Iran eventually. They're going to have to do something because Iran is their mortal enemy. They're very afraid of what Iran potential could, you know, ultimately become a major foe that could do damage to Israel. And uh, so they're wanting America to get out there and deal with it. So isn't Bolton a dual citizen with, with Israel as well as America? I think he is from what I've understood. But anyways, here's the map. The scribbling of the map of where this plane supposedly or drone went and uh, it shows here he's trying to say hey you know you guys got all, all your equipment right on our doorstep and here your here your country is do you see us over there hanging out by you sending our submarines and our planes on your coast no uh and here again is the red he says the blue equals drone yellow line equals iran um, red line equals Iran territorial waters. The green line equals baseline international waters. Yellow dot equals Iran radio warning signal that was sent. And they said that they sent signals to uh, the Americans as we were flying and nobody answered. Nobody answered. Then the red dot was the point where the missile impacted with the drone. Where, yeah, so that's where it is. If you look right there, you can kind of see a little bit better picture. And um, right there is where it kind of impacted there. Ba-bam, ba-bam. And uh, those are the islands. Those islands look kind of funny with the little circles around them. It, 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 I guess that's their, their zone there, that little red red line is uh, what they say the Iranian territorial waters so anything inside of that red line is considered territorial waters the green baseline if you see that it says that's the international waters and um, yeah it's interesting to look at I mean you know kind of try to get both sides of the story I think Iran really does want to push the envelope, though, being that they're, uh, you know, being sanctioned to death. So these sanctions that were just put on Iran today, these new sanctions that were uh, aimed at, I believe, the Ayatollah specifically and one of the top ministers on, on, the, on their administration there, uh, they were basically targeting their finances because they are... Um, able to freeze and to cause other countries to, do, to not do business with them. Be, you know, and I, I was listening to the commentary on this today, 
And they basically said that, hey, America controls the whole world economy. So we can do anything that we want to any country or, or any individual if we want to freeze their assets or to cause people to not do business with them. We basically control the world's currencies and uh, we got the ones and the zeros, they said. I was like, huh, that's interesting. Well, that's why the whole world is really looking at an alternative world reserve currency and a whole new system that that is being set up by the BRIC nations. So, you know, we got to be careful. I, I think that we're not going to be the power that continues on for too much longer if this continues to, to go in the way it has in the past. Hopefully, Trump brings a little humility. And that's exactly what I think he's doing in terms of his policies and not smashing Iran. I think that was the greatest move for him not to not to militarily strike uh, Iran at this point because we. I think Iran wanted it. They wanted a, a, us to do it because it would have precipitated a major regional conflict which would have gained the sympathy of the world on their side. You know, just like that song, the Iran bomb song that I like to play, if you remember the part in the song where the Iranian is, is singing and he says, you can hit us back, sounds like fun. The beauty of Islam will shine so bright. And he's talking about 9-11s all, all over under the sun. He's talking about Iran's desire to, to engage even if they get hit. They don't really care as long as the message is sent to the world to bring down America. They they want to be the ones that that they believe Allah uses to take out America. They would be willing to sacrifice them. So this is the whole thing about Islam martyrdom. Because when they get to the place, especially when you've got this apocalyptic Islamic theology that is guiding and goading their the, their policy. Their 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 policy is guided by this and time apocalyptic theology that they're going to end up ushering in the Mahadi or the Mahdi, Mahadi, Mahdi, how do I say it? Somebody corrected me on that. Mahadi. Okay, they're going to bring in their Messiah when there's conflict in the world that they have themselves initiated. The Prince of Persia out of the book of Daniel. This was the Prince of Persia that was the demonic force that was overseeing the last days prophetic word that was given to Daniel that was trying to stop this word from being given. It hindered Michael the Archangel from delivering that end time message. It was the Prince of Persia. We're talking about some ancient powers. Iran is one of the most ancient countries in the world, going even back to Damascus and Syria, but Iran is one of the most one of the oldest cities in recorded history. Some of the cities right out of Iran. I believe the Garden of Eden, I think the Garden of Eden actually was in Iraq, if I'm not mistaken. It's Iraq and Iran, and you got Syria there, then Israel. Well, I think the one of the oldest recorded history the cities in history is Damascus, from what I've understood. And it says in the book of... In the, i got to get a new chair. This chair is so squeaky either that or i need to tighten some bolts uh it's pretty old and uh rickety yeah i think they said that damascus when it is completely leveled when it becomes a ruinous heap you're gonna know that you're in the last days when when damascus is completely and utterly destroyed in all of recorded history, Damascus has never been a non-livable city. It's never been a non-livable city where it was a ruinous heap, uninhabited. So there's still that expectation that this prophecy is going to be fulfilled and that it's going to be fulfilled in some way that has to do with a nuke that causes no life to be existent in that area or that region of the world. This all has to do with Iran's presence, Russia obviously is there. The king of the north, many say, is represented by Russia. You've got Tubal. You've got the prince of Persia. You've got Persia. You've got Turkey in there. All of these regions, the Bible says, would be represented by those nations in the last day war that unfolds right there on the doorstep of Israel. And this is what it's looking like. This is why Israel is very intent on getting us to engage Iran. They want us to engage. 
uh, because it's something that they don't want to do. Well, they probably would help out. I'm sure they would be right in the mix there, but they don't want to do it at alone. You know, they want they want the the confirmation and the sanction of America to be with them, to be by their side. They want to go in and just destroy Iran's capabilities. And uh, you know, you got the good people. There's a lot of good people, I'm sure, in Iran that you know, just like there are in many countries that that don't. They're not getting caught up in all the politics. They don't want to go to war. They just want to live their lives. They just want to have peace, and they want their their children. Now, there was a there was a video that came out today of the Parliament of Iran calling for death to America. Did you guys see that? Uh, let's see if I can pull that up. Uh, let me pull this up really quick here. Hold on, real quick. Where am I at here? Okay. Yeah, as tension escalates, it says that... Um, they're calling for death to America. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. So it says on the 23rd, Iranian politicians chant death to America during a parliament session amid escalating tensions with Washington following the downing of the unmanned drone. This was yesterday. Let's just go ahead and watch that really quick. نخواهیم کرد و ایستادیم به به این راحتی سرخم نمی کنیم و آمریکا و یا دار و دستش بدانند که ایران ما و کشور ما به این سادگی در مقابل تهدیدهای اونها تسلیم نخواهد شد و تا پای جان ایستادیم و مقاومت خواهیم کرد و با قدرت ادامه خواهیم داد و امیدوارم که این روند با وحدت و انسجام کشور ما ادامه پیدا بکنه So there you got it, death to America. They're chanting it once again, reminding us back of the day when they took our hostages back in the 80s. Uh, Pre uh, President Reagan didn't, once he came in, they let him go awfully quick because they knew Reagan wasn't messing around and uh, he was gonna smash him if they didn't get rid of our, you know, give up our hostages. And they did that back then, and they've done it since. You know, it was kind of an, a chant that they've perfected. And they call Israel the little Satan, and they call America the big Satan. So they really do have it out for America politically. Obviously, we haven't been the nicest cops around. I mean, you know, when you see, and I'm not saying I'm talking down America, but, you know, you've got to, you got to be truthful. I mean, you know, there's always that abusive kind of mentality that you see when someone gains absolute power. You ever heard that saying, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely? Well, that might be a part of what's happened in America. We've become the cop of the world. We've got all the power. We're the ones that control the global economy. Everybody that's got to listen to us. And so we go around kind of pushing our weight, thinking that we're, and you know, this is what I like about President Trump. He doesn't want endless wars. He's not a war hawk. He's trying to de-escalate. He's trying to bring peace. He's trying to really initiate some kind of uh, global uh, resurgence in the uh, world economy that we ultimately are influencing so that we can stay in a place of influence instead of putting ourselves in the, in the ire of the world because we're bullies. And that's the way the world has truly perceived America. If you go and take a poll anywhere else besides our own country, you'll find that America isn't isn't always looked at in the best light. People do not, in many countries around the world and in Europe, this is happening in Europe. This is also in the Middle East. Obviously, Middle East doesn't like what we've been doing. But, you know, hopefully President Trump can turn it around as he did with uh, North Korea. You know, I think that it's a masterful negotiation
technique that President Trump has has perfected here. And I think he's trying to use the same technique with Iran that he did with North Korea in trying to get them to be your friend. You know, in spite of the fact that they might be thuggish and they might we don't agree with their policies and the way that they govern and their theologies or whatever they believe, we still have to coexist without going to war, unnecessary war. Let them do what, they, what they're going to do. Everybody has to give an account for their actions to God anyway. We're not God. America is not God. Um, let me just see. I got a breaking news alert here. Let me see what this is real quick. Uh, it says insider admits. Sh- 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 okay, well that. Did you see their new video? Oh. There's something going on with Google right now. Um, let's move. Let's switch gears here. Google. Did you see the Project Veritas video on what Google has said about President Trump? Did anybody see that? Let's see. um, Let me see if I can pull that right up here real quick. Oh, no. They get a privacy complaint due to a privacy claim by a third party what in the world so they took it down off of youtube can you believe that see youtube takes down stuff because they don't want the public to see it let me just show you guys real quick here oh bitshoot has a backup okay good Look at this, BitChute. That's why everybody loves BitChute. BitChute is uh, an alternative video hosting software or website that a lot of people are posting on. I should actually start posting on there too um, because I don't back up my vid- my videos. <laughs> I just wing it every day. I just hope that they don't take down another channel. But that's why we have, by the way, real real fast before I get it, we got to do a little commercial break here, okay, guys? Just for a minute. Make sure that you guys get connected to us on our direct mobile app or mobile direct messaging uh, alert system. If you're not directly connected to us, if we disappear, you won't know where we're at for a while. And that way we can in- instantly send you a message to your mobile device. All you need to do is type or or text the word trumpet news one word no space to 555-888 you'll get an instant notification anytime we go live any type of offers that we're giving at the time you're going to get a message if there's any kind of breaking news in the world you're going to know exactly where we're at if we ever get censored but more importantly you're going to get a message when something is happening in real time YouTube will not do that for you. Many times you don't get the message for hours later, if not days later. Sometimes you won't even get a message. So that's why we do this. We're, we're also uh, making sure that we can keep connected to you in every way so you don't miss a thing. Okay, so getting back to what we were looking at here. Insider blows whistle about, let me go ahead and put this on so you can see this again. I got to re rescreen everything here so you can see it. It says here An executive reveals that Google's plan to prevent Trump's situation in 2020 on hidden camera. So basically an insider in Google was recorded as saying that they plan to prevent the Trump situation in 2000, in 21, uh, 2020 from happening again. And from what I guess they said is that if they would have known this would have never happened, they would have never allowed Trump to get where he's at. Can you believe they would have never allowed it? That's just plain outright technocracy. I mean, that's like 
dictatorial uh, censorship in the worst kind of communist style way. I'm telling you guys. But here it is. Big update. YouTube has renewed, removed the video from their platform. The video is still available on this website. Uh, Congressman Louis Gohmert issued a statement saying Google should not be deciding whether content is important or trivial, and they most assuredly should not be meddling in our election process. They need their immunity stripped. This is what's going to happen, guys. I'm going to tell you right now. Trump is going to break up Google. He, he needs to do it very quickly and very swiftly. They need to be censored by the government. And this is why they've been doing all this uh, up to this point, making statements, monitoring. They're probably gaining all kinds of evidence right now, being that they are asking the public to give their input on how they've been censored and uh, how they're ta taking down constitutional, what is it, First Amendment. They're taking away, they're trying to take away the First Amendment. You know, everyone has the right to free speech. Everyone, no matter what kind of speech it is. I don't care if it's speech that you hate. You cannot censor free speech on a public platform. And that's exactly what they are. They are a public space. They cannot stop free speech in a public space. So it says an update too. Google executive Jen Janani responded to the video saying, I was having a casual chat with someone at a restaurant and used some imprecise language. Pro Pro Project Veritas got me. Well done. Okay, so Project Veritas exposed her and all the things that they're doing there at Google. This is an executive and we're going to show you guys what they said. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Well, let's just look at what Congressman say, stated real quick here. What the heck is going on? Okay, here we go. Here is the Project Veritas video. Now, pay, cl pay close attention to this. I'm going to try to make it bigger so you can see this. Well, like I said, I'm kind of going off of, I didn't plan to lay, I didn't lay all this out, guys. I'm just doing this on the fly here. So I hope it's, it's a smooth flowing kind of information for you guys. Normally I try to get a little more, you know, a little more um, prepared. But anyways, here we go. What the employees are actually seeing inside the company is different. But the reason we launched our AI principles is because people are not putting that line in the sun. And they were not saying that it's fair and objective. So we're like, well, we are a big company. We're going to say it. People who voted for the current president do not agree with our definition of fairness. They're not objective piece. They're not an objective source of information. But then there are teams uh, which are called ML Fairness. ML Fairness, the teams? Fairness, like, yeah. you know, you need to be fair. If we also train our algorithms, like if 2016 happened again, would we have, would the output be different? They are a highly biased political machine um, that is bent on never letting somebody like Donald Trump come to power again. 2020 is certainly on top of now my own. This is a Goliath I'm but of David trying to say that the Emperor has no clothes. He got called in front of Congress multiple times. They can pressure us, but not changing. Being a small little ant, I can be crushed and I'm aware of that. But this is something that is bigger than me. This is something that needs to be said to the American public. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren is saying that we should break up Google. I'm like, I love her, but she's very misguided. Like, that will not make it better, it'll make it worse. Because now all these smaller companies who don't have the same resources that we do will be charged with preventing the next Trump situation. It's like a small company cannot do it. All right, so did you guys see that? Now, we got more to look at there. Did you guys see that? They are literally saying that they are have now I implemented the, t the, um, the algorithms to stop what 
took place in 2016, a free and fair election. They basically said that they have the structure now to stop the ability of a free and fair election from taking place because they don't agree with what the American people wanted. And that their ability to censor the internet has now been initiated and it's a big company that little companies, if they were broken up, couldn't do. Little companies, if they broke up, Google could not prevent what took place in 2016 the way they're going to try to prevent that from happening again in 2020. This is why everybody needs to see this. This is why this information is getting out. And President Trump is going to break this in little pieces. You watch. You guys watch. Mark my words. Google is going to to be broken up and regulated by the government. Let's go ahead and uh, watch this once again. By the way, we have been on the receiving end of great amounts of censorship in the last four years. We have lost four, at least 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. The reason that Alphabet company that oversees the parent company of Google as well as a lot of other companies, the reason they lost I think it's close to $250 billion. They lost $180 billion at one point. Uh, a month earlier, they stated they lost $80 billion. They blamed it on YouTube. All of the shareholders and stockholders were so upset because they censored YouTube and deleted million, at least a million channels, they said. With all that engagement, with all that shared revenue, Google lost their pants. Their stocks went down, as well as the other tech companies like Google, or Facebook, and Twitter, and others, because of the censorship. They had to do this because of a political bias. They were willing to throw away billions of dollars and throw their shareholders under the bus from making any kind of profit off of their stock because of a political message that they wanted to send and control. They wanted to control the political environment at the expense of the freedom of Americans' cho choice to choose a right or to uh, a du a, a duly elect a president with the right to choose who they want to rule the country. But see, Google is not beholden to American values. It is a globalist, communist-style kind of techno technocracy. Techno what is it? How do you say it? Technocracy, technic, technocracy, yeah, technocracy. But anyways, controlled by these big corporations. So let's go ahead and finish up this video. I think this is important that we watch this. Let's go ahead and um, see what's going on here in context. Earlier this year, a Facebook insider exposed de-boosting of conservatives on Facebook. That insider inspired someone at Pinterest to come to Project Veritas with his story. Last week, we released a report from the Pinterest insider Eric Cochran, detailing censorship of pro-life and Christian content. The tech companies can't fight us all. Today, we bring you a Google insider. A brave man who came forward and brought us a story that will scare you. I think sunlight is the best disinfectant and people need to start asking questions. A couple weeks before the Google Insider came forward, Project Veritas secretly recorded with Jen Janai, a Google executive. Janai talks about making sure when people search for things through machine learning algorithms, Google's political agenda is always present. We all got screwed over in 2016. Right after Donald Trump won the election in 2016, the company did a complete 180 in uh, what they thought was important. Before they thought self-expression and giving everyone a voice was important, but uh, now they're like, hey, there's a lot of hate, and because of there's a lot of hate and misogyny and racism, that's the reason why Donald Trump got elected. And so we need to uh, fix that. And we need to start policing our users because we don't like to have an outcome uh, like that. We don't want to have an outcome like that to happen again. Yeah, let's 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 talk a little about that. Um, so, 
Um, tell me more about what you observed at these meetings right after Trump was elected. Who said it? What was said exactly? So the the things that changed was that in the TJFs, they started talking about the need to combat hate and racism online and also um, at YouTube, they had the same like talks by the CEO, Susan, um, and they, they, they talked about combating that and getting rid of unfairness. And so slowly they started introducing uh, the concept of uh, machine learning fairness. Jen Janai is the head of responsible innovation at Google Global Affairs. She determines policy and ethics for machine learning or artificial intelligence. What we've learned is that AI is increasingly what Google search is all about. But the reason we launched our AI principle is because people were not putting that line in the sand. They were not saying what is fair and objective. So they were like, well, we are a big company. We're going to say it. Where my definition of fairness and bias specifically talks about uh, historically marginalized communities. And that's what I care about. Communities who are communities who are in power and have traditionally been in power are not who I'm solving fairness for. Our definition of fairness was those things that we thought would be like obvious and everybody would agree to. And it was Like there are the same people who voted for the current president do not agree with our definition of fairness. Fairness is a dog whistle. It does not mean what you think that it means and you have to apply double think in order to understand what they're really saying. And what they're really saying about fairness is that they have to manipulate their search results so that it gives them their political agenda that they want. And so they have to re-bias their algorithms so that they can, uh, they can get their agenda across. You know, to unpack everything that she's saying, saying that she wants to be, she wants the algorithm to be fair to a, a, a hand-picked representative of that community means that what she's trying to do is she's trying to sell you a product that is not objectionable. It's, what she's trying to do is she's trying to sell a product that's not objective, that doesn't represent the will of its users, but instead represents the will of a, of a, of a group of people making decisions behind the shadows. So what did you find inside Google that was related to this idea of fairness? What I found at Google related to fairness was a machine learning algorithm called ML fairness, ML standing for machine learning. And fairness, meaning whatever it is that they want to define as fair. You could actually think of fairness as unfair because it's um, taking as input the clicks that people are making and then figuring out which signals are being generated from those clicks and which signals it wants to amplify and then also dampen. So I have google.com up in front of me and I'm gonna try to put this AI machine learning thing to the test. I'm going to type in the following words, men can, and I see men can have babies, men can get pregnant, Men can have periods, men can cook. Do most people search for that stuff or what is the company doing internally? You no, know, people, people aren't searching for this. This is, this is literally coming from source of truth databases that they've selected represent the truth and that they are pulling this information from. And then we try it again with, let's try this with women can. I don't see I see women can vote, women can do it, women can do anything, women can be drafted. Yes. That seems a little interesting. So all these examples are, um, are part of the social justice narrative, right? And so the sources of truth that ML Fairness is selecting from to amplify um, are saying these keywords. And, and so because that source of truth has been vandalized, the output of the algorithm is also reflecting that vandalism. Project Veritas also received a trove of confidential documents from within Google. This document is about algorithmic unfairness. It reads, quote, for example, imagine that a Google image query for CEOs shows predominantly men. Even if it were a factually accurate representation of the world, it would be 
algorithmic unfairness, unquote. Gorov Gite, a Google software engineer, independently verified the thesis of this document. But then there are teams uh, which are called ML fairness. ML fairness, the teams? Fairness, like, yeah. you know, you need to be fair. Yeah. So they are trying to modify the model such that even if the data for a female CEO says it's low, no, yeah, it's low. It's kind yeah. of balances out. It still balances out. Now this is a, a confidential document, correct? Yes. This is not a document that Google has come out and admitted uh, that this is their process. That's correct. Um, and in this in this document, it says, I'm going to read from it. In fact, in fact, if you brought this up without the document, they would say that this is a conspiracy theory. Wow. So then they wouldn't admit this publicly. They would never admit this publicly. In, in this document, it says, in some cases, it may be appropriate to take no action if the system accurately affects current reality, while in other cases, it may be desirable to consider how we might help society reach a more fair and equitable state via product intervention. What do they mean by that? So what they want to do is they want to act as gatekeepers between the user and the content that they're trying to access. And so they're going to come in, they're going to filter the content and they're going to say, ah, actually, we don't want to give the user access to that information because it's going to create a, a, an outcome that's undesirable to us. So this was an internal only Google document, which says the goal is to establish, quote, a single point of truth for definition of news across Google products, unquote. What does this, what does this mean? Um, when they mean single point of truth, what they mean is alignment with the narrative. And so the narrative come, is manufactured by um, establishment players. And what they're looking to do is they're looking to boost authoritative content. Accusations on around the fairness is that we're unfair to conservatives because we are choosing what we define as incredible news sources, and those news sources don't necessarily overlap with conservative sources. And so we're getting accusations on fair from the side. Does Google have an editorial agenda? Uh, does the company make news decisions? Is that what I'm seeing in this document? Yes. Um, this is describing what's happening within the, with, the, with Google News. Would Google have a problem if people saw this document? Yeah, I think so. Why wouldn't Google want people to see this document? Uh, the reason why is because um, right here, um, in uh, some of these boxes, they're applying um, editorial, uh, their, their editorial agenda onto uh, the news sources. And if you were to expand that, you would see that there's a uh, machine learning uh, fairness within these uh, algorithmic checks. And they state right here that it's for crawlability and extractability, but in reality, it's, it's, it's does it fall in line with their, um, with their agenda. And if it does, it, it pops to the top, and if it doesn't, then it gets buried. Other internal documents expose Google's hopes for ML fairness. Training data are collected and classified. Algorithms are programmed. Media are filtered, ranked, aggregated, and generated. People, like us, are programmed. Sounds like social engineering, not search querying. Google's power has become a political issue, with politicians on both sides of the aisle debating whether antitrust legislation or other regulations and controls are in order. We got called in front of Congress multiple times, and we've not shown up. We were like, we just know they're going to just attack us. Like, we're not going to change our response. We're not going to change your mind. There's no point in just sitting there being attacked for something that we know we're not going to change. Like, they can pressure us, but we're not changing. 
be aware of what they're doing and what they're accusing us of. Like I said, like, you know, they could just, like, Elizabeth Warren, even I love her, but she's also saying, like, you just have to break up Google and that will solve everything. You have to what? Elizabeth Warren is saying that yeah. we should break up Google. And, like, I love her, but she's very misguided. Like, that will not make it better. It'll make it worse because now all these smaller companies who don't have the same resources that we do will be charged with preventing the next Trump situation. It's like a small company cannot do and it's like Right now, there's a lot of chatter in Washington, D.C., antitrust discussions and legislation being mentioned about breaking up Google. How do your bosses or the people that you work with inside of Google feel about that? Um, for the most part, they're, they're ignoring it. To them, it's not even happening. Um, they don't see it as a real threat because it's something that's already happened before and passed. She just said what Google's really thinking, and they won't say in public, but she just said, you know, what a lot of us see and know to be true. And you guys just got her and she was just, she just said the truth. They're not an objective piece. They're not an objective source of information. They are a highly biased political machine. Um, that is bent on never letting somebody like Donald Trump come to power again. 2020 is certainly on top of now my old organization, Trust and Safety, is top of mind. They've been working on it since 2016 to make sure we're ready for 2020. So training our algorithms, like if 2016 happened again, would we have, would the outcome, outcome be different? It's unclear what Janai is exactly referring to, but Google's political agenda is undeniable. some other things I can type here. Hillary Clinton's emails are doesn't even it doesn't even give you a result. Google is suggesting that people do not search for this term. Is that correct? That's what they're saying. It's not even worth returning any results. But people do search for this. Absolutely. And you can tell that because you can cross reference some of their other services that prove that people are. If you want to get an example, go to trends.google.com. Okay, I'll do that right now. Trends.google.com. And uh, shall I do Hillary Clinton's emails, yes. Okay, and set it to the, like, the last five years. Seems like we had a spike in October of 2016. It says 100. I guess that is that 100. It's all relative. So in order to get an idea of the relative importance of this, you're going to want to compare it against another search term. Let's type in Donald Trump's emails. Okay. Show me what I'm looking at here. So what we see right here is relative to the search term of Hillary Clinton's emails, Donald Trump's emails has no search traffic. No search traffic. Now let's go back to google.com and search for Donald Trump's emails and it should show us no autocomplete because according to Google, no one searches for it compared to Hillary Clinton's emails. But it does. It gives us a whole bunch of different examples for autocomplete. So nobody's, fewer people search for this and it autocompletes and everyone searches for Hillary Clinton's email and it doesn't. That's right. What's the explanation? Well, according to them, Hillary Clinton's emails is a conspiracy theory and it's unfair to return results based on her emails. And so through their program of ML Fairness, they've deleted the autocomplete off the internet like it didn't even exist. How did they do that? Was it manually? Was it a human being? Was it, a, was, it, was it a machine? AI? Well, the way that it works is that they're training the AI now with uh, a human, with a bunch of humans that you consider them social justice warriors or whatever you want to label them, but they are feeding the information and training the AI so that it will uh, return results like this. And when they aren't able to um, 
to, to train it, there's actually something that will, someone that will go through and manually delete certain keyword terms or put it as a blacklist. There's a lot of people filing bugs internally against Google, like against these invalid results, and they ignore them because they've got no interest in fixing uh, things that go against their social justice narrative or uh, reduce what they consider to be fair. Google is protected by Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. Okay, just real quick here, I just want to just give you a little update because we're going to we're going to watch after this is over we're going to it's almost over we're going to watch another video um and by the way this channel because i'm playing this stuff uh could be threatened so that's why i i tell you guys the censorship is very real this information has already been wiped off of youtube okay i'm going to play another video after this that would also probably get me a strike and or banned. Um, if you want to find these videos, you can also go to my Twitter page because I also simulcast this with Periscope. So Periscope is actually also on my Twitter page that is going to show this same broadcast. I might delete this off of YouTube, but... Um, you know, I won't delete it off of Periscope. So if you ever want to find all my videos that you, if you miss a video that's not on YouTube anymore because I've deleted it to try to save the channel, you can always go to my Twitter page. You can also go to blazingpress.com. My Twitter feed is on the right. You can also see it right there, the uh, Periscope live feed. It should be chronicled as well. Um, also, we do appreciate your guys' support to keep us moving on with this because we do have a, a pretty large bill now because we're getting a lot more subscribers, a lot more credits. The more we uh, get people subscribing, the more we need a little more funding to try to get into a higher bra bracket of credits that we send out these alerts with. There are credits that uh, equal, you know, they, they have a, a monetary value for each credit and we've already got like 1,200 subscribers. so. We're, we're, we're increasing our subscriber base there. We're not really worried too much about our subscriber base on YouTube because we know that it's going to be gone if they don't fix this censorship thing. very. And this has been going on for about three or four years now, really in earnest. And uh, we started warning people about this right after the election. People didn't even know about it. We were the first ones on YouTube telling people we, we see something going on. Um, but they were censoring us even way before that just because we're always been on the cutting edge we're a little edgy we cut we we're on the cutting edge that's what happens when you're on the cutting edge it's a good sign though that means you're doing something that means you're over the target when you got the flack right all right so we're going to finish this up and then i'm going to get you another cutting edge video that's going to explain what's going on with this whole censorship thing the ai this very scary thing that's going on with ai if you guys have not studied what ai is boy i'll tell you what we are living in the last days i'm telling you this is the beast system this is the beast system get ready if you're a believer and a christian this is why they're trying to censor you as well because they're going after conservatives and christians so get ready here we go we're going to go ahead and play the rest of this and then i'll get that other information up there to you guys. It says, quote, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider, unquote. Meaning Google is not liable for any content on their platform. Some people think a solution is this section 230 and taking it away. I mean, they violated not only the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. Section 230 uh, says that in order for them to be a platform, they can't censor the content uh, that they have. And instead, they decided to act as a publisher, making them responsible for everything that they put on. And they're still masquerading as a platform, even though they're acting as a publisher. It doesn't stop with Google search. Our insider says political biases are censoring voices on YouTube, owned by Google as well. He says the YouTube rollout discussion was at a rather bizarre location. We didn't have it. It was a special occasion that happened um, uh, in May, and they... Um, they invited us all to the Masonic Temple to talk about the future of the company. 
uh, for YouTube and they described that they were going to have more content filtering. And right after that happened, um, a lot of the content creators started to get demonetized um, and their uh, videos started to get deranked. I'm talking about um, Dave Rubin, um, talking about Carpe Diem, talking about Tim, uh, Tim Pool, um, and a lot of the other content creators that are within the YouTube ecosystem just saw their, 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 their view counts just go through the floor. What did YouTube do to make their view counts go down? So Google is targeting what they consider to be right-wing news commentators. So that includes um, Tim Pool, Dave Rubin, Stephen Crowder, and a host of other right-wing people that they are coming in and they're deciding that they don't want these opinions to have a wide appeal. And so they're coming in and they're putting their thumb down and they're deciding which content the users are allowed to see. The way that Google is able to target people is that they take videos and then they do a uh, transliteration through using artificial intelligence. And they look at the translated text of what those people are saying, and then they assign certain categories to them, like right-winger or, um, or, or, or news talk. And then they're able to, to take those and apply their algorithmic rebiasing unfairness algorithms to them so that their content is suppressed across the platform. Specifically, the insider verified that PragerU, the conservative educational YouTube channel, and talk show host Dave Rubin's videos received heightened analysis in the artificial intelligence program Viacon. Viacon polices YouTube distribution, singling Prager and Rubin out as right wing and news talk. So they're applying narrative control. What's scary about this to you? What's scary is that Google's deciding what's important and what's not important. Um, they are going through and they're effectively deleting conversations from the, the, the national narrative. It reminds me of a book called 1984, and that should have been a warning. 1984 should not be a user manual on how to run society. And Google is falling directly into that trap where they're deciding what gets read, what gets consumed, what people are able to click on, what appears. Um, you know, it reminds me a lot of fascism. Like, you know, it's not just about burning books. When videos get pulled off of a platform, that's also a form of censorship. I've been living this for, um, you know, years. And so, you know, it's like, yeah, that's what it is. And for other people, it's shocking. But for me, it's like, this is why I'm coming forward. Hmm. Because it is shocking. People have no idea that it's happening. And they still think that Google is an objective source of information, and it's not. Are you afraid? Um, I am afraid. Um, I was more afraid, but um, I, I had a lot of difficulty with the concept of, uh, you know, my life ending because of this. But um, I, I imagined what the other world would look like, and it's not a place that I'd want to live in. What do you think is going to happen next for you? Um, uh, hopefully I get away with it and uh, nothing bad happens, but um, bad things can happen. I mean, this is a behemoth. This is a Goliath. I'm but a David trying to say that the emperor has no clothes. And um, being a small little ant, I can be crushed and I'm aware of that but this is something that is bigger than me. This is something that needs to be said to the American public. This year, insiders approached Project Veritas and told their stories, exposing the giants in Silicon Valley. Thanks to the bravery and courage these insiders are showing, big tech is being held accountable. This is a watershed moment. It's not the New York Times or CBS News doing the work. It's individual citizens, anonymous, heroes who put their careers on the line and they've struck a nerve and found their voice at Project Veritas. People always ask me, what can I do? You can follow the lead of Eric Cochran and the Google Insider. You too can be brave, wear a camera, 
and contact us securely at projectveritas.com slash brave. Okay, so the next video we're going to see is also potentially dangerous <laughs> to put out. Uh, let's see if I can get that one up. And this has to do with everything that we're talking about here. Uh, this has to do with everything that we're talking about right now. And by the way, share this video. Thumbs up the video, guys. Thumbs it up. Thumbs it up. It's important to thumbs up this video. Share it. Get the information out there. Um, we need to get as many eyes on this as possible. You know, organically, uh, so social networks, I know they'll try to censor it, but that just means that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Because you got to throw yourself into the clogs of the cogs of the system, right? You got to throw yourself into the cogs of the system to try to, to, to stop it. And this is what we're doing. And this is what many are doing online. You guys getting behind channels like ours is so important financially. So getting that message out socially on the social networks, thumbs up in the videos, um, sharing the content wherever we, we can to grow our subscriber base. We need to grow that subscriber base. Any, any type of thing that we put out, because I'm spending time to do this, I want to try to put more time into it. I mean, I kind of, you know, I see the, the, the danger all in, in all of this. I'm not saying that I don't see what's going on. I'm, but like he said, do you want to live in a world? Do you want your kids to live in a world that's going to be, obviously the outcome is going to be terrible, 1984 and worse? Or do you want to try to make a difference and try to stop at least to prolong or, or to prevent it from happening as quickly as it looks like it's happening? I pray that President Trump is the man that's going to continue to, to fight this and pu push back and, and, and give us a reprieve of what is predicted is prophesied to happen. It's going to happen eventually. Well, there's nothing we can do to stop it at a certain point. The only thing you can do is get ready, get prepared in every way. Get your life right with God. Get your heart prepared. Get your, you know, be ready to, 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 to you know, get away from this all because it's going to eventually, you know, happen as we all know scripture teaches. But let's go ahead and listen to what the AJ man has to say about this. Try not to say his name so that we don't get censored too quickly. They might censor us right off the bat. The, the AIs are listening to everything that you're saying and doing, so be careful. All right, here we go. I literally get butterflies when somebody like Matt Drudge shows up at our offices or I got a Project Veritas, James O'Keefe on. Because you know what? That's the person saving my children's future. That's somebody they tried to indict six or seven times. Hell, they didn't indict him once. That's somebody they're trying to put in prison. Somebody they're trying to kill. And I know for a fact he's going through the same stuff I go through behind the scenes. Those are real men. And everybody else gets threatened with being taken off the air or blacklisted if they come on our show. And all these other good time pals that always wanted on the show, as soon as we got blacklisted, they won't even talk to us. And it doesn't hurt my feelings. They won't talk to me. It hurts my feelings to know they're not men. They're not even little boys. They're fakes that want to play both sides. When you try to play both sides of something like this, you lose the whole civilization. Coming at you live. Ha ha ha, you live. He, he just. 50,000! Unstoppable Watts! <laughs> he sounds like one of those heavy metal guys. Yo! Ha ha! He's got he's got an intro playing. That's why we're we're behind the scenes. 
and uh, that's why he's not saying anything because there's this is a live broadcast behind the scenes. Um, what have I told you? They be lying. He's got bumper. Clutch music. bringing us in. He's got bumper music playing over the top. Way so underrated. You can't, you can't hear it right now. Getting old, man. I'm getting a little fat, little earlobes like Grandpa. <laughs> Woo! It's your source of information. Fifty thousand unstoppable watts. Hell, I think we got like twelve fifty thousand watt AM stations. All right, let's get back to the serious news. I'm very happy about this, but uh, if if we don't do our job, and that means you, and that means I'm on my knees, please realize how much power you've got. If you get the article at NewsWars.com and InfoWars.com and the live feed at InfoWars.com and NewsWars.com and just email it and text it out and call people and call talk radio and say, wow, after Google lied to Congress and after Google told the world that they weren't censoring anybody and after all the times we caught them in their internal documents and their own admissions, Project Veritas has put out a 25-minute report and hours of raw footage on their site showing Google executives bragging how they censor conservatives and block them and how they call fairness not letting Trump get reelected or people like him. Jin Janai. These are high-level individuals. And they're SJWs right out of college. That's where they produce these clones like something out of Star Wars. They may look different, but they all got the same worldview. And they just come out and say, we're not going to let 2020 happen again. But didn't the head of Google, remember this? Breitbart.com, Infowars.com, DrudgeReport.com hammered it. September 11, 2018, the documents came out from the day after November 8th, 2016, on November 9th, this video went out to Google's leadership. Thousands of managers, somebody was bad and leaked it. Google's leadership dismayed reaction to Trump, and they promise to not let it happen again. But hell, internal emails said they were going to deliver the election to Hillary. Here, here's just some of the hours of this stuff. Here it is. I certainly find the selection uh, deeply offensive, and I know many of you do too. It did feel like a ton of bricks dropped on my chest. So what we all need right now is a hug. Can I move to Canada? <laughs> Can I move to Canada? Is there anything positive you see from this election result? <laughs> Oof. Uh, boy, that's, that's a really tough one right now. And they go on to say... We are not going to let this happen again. We're going to play more video of that in a moment. But if you're a TV viewer, you notice they're wearing propeller hats, dunce hats. They have beer on the campus and pinball machines. And it's all done as camouflage. The most criminal parts of DARPA in the globalist eugenics stay-behind cult set it up now 21 years ago to be an AI takeover of the planet. It's dealt with China and in the EU like it loves authoritarianism, it hates America. They say that in their own documents. They work to arrest political dissidents, but their own employees dress like clowns and go around, oh, I'm wearing pink and green non-matching socks. It's all camouflage for their criminal activity. And the people you see managing Google, that's just front people. Alphabet, with Eric Schmidt and Obama and, and the Clintons all hover in the darkness with the strings down their little puppets. I thought someday it would be you that would hold the strings. I don't know, Senator Corleone, President Corleone. But see, there's something about a handsome man that's built his own company and wearing a nice suit and kills people himself. That's scary. People know he could be the bad guy. But see, Google wears a propeller hat on the head. Doesn't matter they got a trillion dollars. Doesn't matter they watch everything you do. Doesn't matter they sell it all to the Chinese and the Chinese put two million of their own people in concentration camps using Google. 
doesn't matter. Hell, if Hitler wore a propeller hat, we probably would have let him win. See how it works? That's why child molesters dress up like clowns or girls. They learn they can get your kid in the back of the car that way. All right, that's enough. So I'm not doing a very good Don Corleone anyway, so I was kind of segueing off into a Goodfellas. And you know, this is a lot so business, huh? When they call for a meeting, it'll be at that meeting, you'll be assassinated. Did you check the phone lines again? You had to check that. I checked it all, Pops. Good stuff. The point is, is that we know mafia when it's looking at us right in the eyes. And we're not stupid. And so here's the big news, ladies and gentlemen. Project Veritas champion, hero, all around badass. See, I don't admire Michael Jordan. Very entertaining to watch, amazing athlete. Put it this way, I admire Michael Jordan, but on a scale of one to 10, Michael Jordan's like a two. Project Veritas is like a nine. Trump's like a nine. Firefighter that goes in a house, he knows it's collapsing to get kids out. Gets burned to death. That guy's a 10. Somebody in a hostage situation goes in to take out a jihadi, takes him out, he detonates a suicide vest, kills him, that's a 10. No, I'm sorry. Roger Staubach's a 2. Roger Staubach would tell you that too, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just that simple. I literally get butterflies when... Somebody like Matt Drudge shows up in our offices, or I got a Project Veritas, James O'Keefe on. Because you know what? That's the person saving my children's future. That's somebody they tried to indict six or seven times. Hell, they did indict him once. That's somebody they're trying to put in prison. Somebody they're trying to kill. And I know for a fact he's going through the same stuff I go through behind the scenes. Those are real men. And everybody else gets threatened with being taken off the air or blacklisted if they come on our show. And all these other good time pals that always wanted on the show, as soon as we got blacklisted, they won't even talk to us. And it doesn't hurt my feelings. They won't talk to me. It hurts my feelings to know they're not men. They're not even little boys. They're fakes that want to play both sides. When you try to play both sides of something like this, you lose the whole civilization. So we come back. I'm going to get to the boil down of the 25-minute video. Then O'Keefe's going to be on, and then I'm going to air the entire investigative report after that, and then Gerald Salente, another great patriot that I admire, is going to be taking over the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. I admire people like David Knight. He had a huge heart attack, almost died, and a week after he had surgery, he came down here and tried to do a show till he almost passed out, countermanding my orders. They take off two months because he was upset about what's happening to the country. That's what made this country great. Not a bunch of damn wanting to be on TV just to be on TV or walk some red carpet. You couldn't pay me to walk a red carpet. You know, in Hollywood, walking the red carpet's a joke. They all hate it. They all know it's all about food on the general public that somehow they're on some higher level than you. They, they are on a higher level, a higher level of bathing in crap. All these Google slaves are going down. They're not going to beat us. So keep running your arrogant fat mouths. We're going to play it when we come back. Good old Jen, Jenai and others at Google are in a detailed projectveritas.com report. That we've got served up for you at newswars.com. Please get it and send everybody you know. Watch. Google admits they're going to steal the election from Trump in 2020. They are arrogant about it, just like college professors. When they say there is no free speech on this campus, there will be no pro-Trump speakers, there will be no Republican speakers. This is their just conceitedness. Their arrogance will be their undoing unless we aren't active. So we're very close to the antitrust suits that are about to be filed. We need injunctions. We need the FBI to raid Google. And by the way, that's being talked about. Just for their espionage 
What about their lying to Congress, all their executives? There's more than one way to skin a cat. But the Heritage Foundation and the Koch brothers funding the Republican Party establishment go, oh, private companies can do anything they want. Oh, sure, right. Yeah, Google could have 93% of the searches in the U.S. and put up searches saying that the, the, the official uh, f party affiliation of Trump is Adolf Hitler. And that Republicans are in the Nazi party. When you just go to vote or look stuff up, it's just, oh, their affiliation's Nazis. You know, doesn't that look kind of funny? Just be cutting in here just for a minute. When that headline popped up, the antitrust, uh, doesn't it look like, I'm going to scoot it back just for a second there. Oops. Miles, all of Let me just put it up there real quick. Let me see if I can find it here. Oh gosh, this thing doesn't allow you to do that. This is bit bit shoot, um, but anyways, it said there antitrust, and it totally looked like antichrist. If you read the sentence, it it could perfectly fit antitrust, antichrist, and uh, it's really that's it's the system being set up to to really usher in that system that is going to control every human being's thoughts, words, actions, e economic, you know, their paycheck, uh, what they eat, what they, what they buy, what they sell. It's literally a system that's already been implemented and it's just waiting. Like someone said for the, the anti, uh, the anti man of sin, freedom, anti freedom, every, everything that is anti human is ultimately just waiting in the wings to come on the scene right now. Thank God we've got good men that are resisting like you and me and our president and uh, people like AJ here. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up here. Let's see what's, I don't know if I'm going to be able to play this now because it's not working. I stopped it. BitChute doesn't allow you to, to replay. What the heck is going on here? Let me refresh this now. I literally get butterflies. The video I mentioned, insider blows whistle. It's ma'am, you don't have a vagina or a spectacist head. The former fair and equitable program is now called machine learning fairness. Now a machine calls it fair when Trump loses and when they game the system like Google's brag. But because they call it fair, when you call a man a woman, they have it happening all over the world. They're filing suits and winning. Men come in to have gynecological exams, pap smears, and, and they tell them, sir or ma'am, it's ma'am, you don't have a vagina or a cervix. And they go, they tell female nurses, you will check my cervix. And many go, okay. And then usually the bizarre drugged out method says stick your fingers in you know where. And the women do it. They they submit to being raped because it's a god in front of them. And mothers bring their little kids to sit on the laps of convicted pedophiles all over the country. It's all confirmed. We've named the names, shown you the convictions of rapists. And the mothers bring them like to bail, like a human sacrifice, and set them on the laps. Because it's all about your submission to evil. Because if you'll put up with that, if nurses are made to give men cervical exams and now they want taxpayers to pay for dogs' sex changes and cats' sex changes, they're coming to take me away. Ha 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 ha. Except it's the globalists. They're making us submit to madness. We're the ones that are crazy. Well, not me. So here's just some of the Project Veritas boil down. And James O'Keefe coming up in the third hour. Here it is. And the reason why I decided to come to Project Veritas is because um, people need to know what's actually going on with Google. There's this facade about what they're doing, but what they're actually doing, what the employees are actually seeing inside the company, is different. But the reason we launched our AI principles because people were not putting that line in the sand. They were not saying... Hey, back this up. Well, let's go to the start again. She's the head of responsible innovation. We're innovating things. What did uh, the head of Apple say? They asked him, why did you ban Alex Jones completely off everything and even ban his top app? It was number one. The people voted it number one news app by downloading it. Number one. Ahead of the Wall Street Journal, Fox News, they were number one. 
And he said, oh, I don't even, he's a horrible person. I told you. Well, I'm like a curator in a museum. And because I'm gay, it's okay, all right? Yes, I run death camps in China, the worst factories with suicide nets, but I'm, I'm gay. I'm like, dude, I don't care what you do with your ding a -ling, Tim Cook. So I've been told folks to know him. He is major pissed at me talking about that. I'm just saying, running death camps, you don't get a pass because you're gay. By the way, what the hell are you on, bro? There's all these video interviews with him under bright lights with 90% pupil. I mean, I've taken three hits of acid and my eyes didn't get that big, you know? I'm joking. Never did that. I took mushrooms with the acid. With I'm joking. <laughs> the point is, I have never seen anybody's eyeballs that big. They're pupils. So whatever he's on, doesn't look too healthy, does he? But it's okay. I have a trillion-dollar company, and it costs $20 to make the phone. And even the Communist Party said if you'd pay people a dollar a day more, they wouldn't have to live on the street working for you. And he just said, oh, my gosh, did you know I'm gay? It's like, it's okay. It's okay. He went to China two years ago, and he said, I want to censor everybody. I support governments doing it. That was a major headline. But, again, he's gay. As long as a gay person does it, it's liberal. Oh, my gosh, how sweet. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go back to the report. Sorry. So this is the head lady, just cold-bloodedly. <laughs> and notice she says, it doesn't matter. What Congress tries, we're not going to stop. <laughs> You'll never stop me, Superman. Here, here it is. Um, the reason why I decided to come to Project Veritas is because um, people need to know what's actually going on with Google. There's this facade about what they're doing, but what they're actually doing, what the employees are actually seeing inside the company, is different. Well, but the reason we launch our AI principles because they're not objective piece they're not an objective source of information but then there are teams uh, which are called ml fairness ml fairness the teams fairness like, yeah. you know you need to be fair and hey, pause again we're going to come back with more of this but algorithmic unfairness their ideas are dominating they have scientists on saying there's only men and women and that's not fair so they're bad <laughs> meanwhile they've totally sold out the chai comms that execute you if you're a homosexual but it's okay because tim cook's gay we're going to come back with all of that and we have congressman josh hawley former uh, attorney general uh missouri Awesome guy. He has introduced the bills that will strip them of Section 230 if they don't stop what they're doing right now. So more power to you. Full steam ahead. That's coming up next segment. You understand there's 25 minutes of this in the boil down. You just heard 60 seconds. It gets worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. They say Congress may think they're going to stop us. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get into all of it. Algorithmic unfairness means unjust or prejudicial treatment of people that is related to sensitive characteristics. And they can apply that to anything they want, anytime. Bottom line, you will submit, you will assimilate, and by the way, your children are ours. Now bring them. <laughs> and we're coming out with our own currencies. That'll be the new world currencies. And if you don't behave and give us your children, you won't buy or sell. So give us your children. We're really nice people dressed like clowns. Give them to us. That's their priest class is pedos in clown outfits. Yeah, you don't think Stephen King just came up with that, do you? <laughs> Come on over here, Georgie. But behind the scenes, they're not wearing helicopter hats. Oh, no, no. They're vicious and hardcore. Their camouflage is fat men in high heels behind the scenes. It's pure, hardcore Satanism, torture, and death. So if you're a radio listener and listening on AM, you can make this out. Uh, but some of the audio goes up and down. It's just hidden audio. I give it an A-plus, though, for effort. But 
when you get into the raw footage and it's not the intro to the video and it doesn't have the music over it, it's even more powerful. So I'll try to shut up and air the intro to this and then come back and get more into the other news and James O'Keefe joins us next hour. But it's a maximum action alert. The article's on Infowars.com, Newswars.com, ProjectVeritas.com. It's up on DrudgeReport.com. This should be the top story in the world. Google caught red-handed. Google execs admit they're stealing the election from 2020, from Trump. Google exec admits election meddling to prevent Trump winning 2020. Paul Joseph Watson brags Congress can pressure us, but we're not changing. Again, they hate this country so much, they would give AI given to them by DARPA to the chi under Obama's orders. It's, it's high treason, folks. And that's why they had no respect for us. And we finally get a president trying to do a little something, and they're crapping bricks. They can build a giant brick building with the amount of it. So they're doubling down on their fear. More leaks are coming, ladies and gentlemen, but if they steal 2020, it, it's, 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 it's just going to be unbelievable. I haven't even gotten into half of it. They're harassing Tucker Carlson at his house. I got inside baseball on that. And it's just outrageous what they're doing to Tucker's family. You know, I, I get sent child porn. They come to Tucker Carlson's house. And again, we're not victims. We're victorious. It's why they're doing this to us. But let me tell you, if there's a center in the universe that's evil, it's called the Democratic Party. So let's go ahead and go back to this uh, Project Veritas piece. Um, the reason why I decided to come to Project Veritas is because um, people need to know what's actually going on with Google. There's this facade about what they're doing, but what they're actually doing, what the employees are actually seeing inside the company is different. Well, but the reason we launched our AI principles is because people were not putting that line in the sun. They were not saying it's fair and it's equal. So we're like, well, we are a big company. We're going to say it. People voted for the current They're not objective piece. They're not an objective source of information. But then there are teams. Uh, it's about ML fairness. ML fairness, the teams. Fairness. Like, yeah. You know, you need to be fair. If we're also training our algorithms, like if 2016 happened again, would we have, would the, I, I, I couldn't be different. Like, it's not like They are a highly biased political machine. Um, that is bent on never letting somebody like Donald Trump come to power again. 2020 is certainly on top of now my old organization, Trust and Safety, is top of mind. They've been working on it since 2016 to make sure we're ready for 2020. This is a Goliath I'm but of David trying to say that the emperor has no clothes. He got called in front of Congress multiple times. They can pressure us, but we're not changing. Being a small little ant that can be crushed, and I'm aware of that. But this is something that is bigger than me. This is something that needs to be said to the American public. What? Elizabeth Warren is saying that yeah. we should break up Google. Yeah. I'm like, I love her, but she is very misguided. Like, that will not make it better. It will make it worse. Because now all these smaller companies who don't have the same resources that we do will be charged with preventing the next Trump situation. Like a small company. Yeah. And it's like... Ladies and gentlemen, this is the face of authoritarianism. Little chicken necks, little control freaks giggling and laughing, lying to Congress, stealing all your data, the, the company heads making hundreds of billions, working with authoritarians, rounding up political opposition all over the world, but then manned by a bunch of recently graduated scum out of these evil anti-free speech un-American cancers that masquerade as higher learning centers known as universities. They're really just globalist porta potties where they crap on us. Nightmares. Divorce from America, divorce from common sense, divorce from chivalry, divorce from anything decent. They are the new authoritarians. They are the enemy. They are the threat. And they are our rulers. We must overthrow them.
It's never been easy to figure out the essentials of a new supplement routine. That's why we created the 8-Pack Power Stack, your go-to option for the building blocks of a successful approach to supplementation. This one-stop shop for those looking to simplify or adjust their routine is perfect for new and old info warriors alike. With the 8-Pack Power Stack, there's no trial and error, messy bottles laying across the counter, or 20-minute morning habits. Just take the wake up and work or rest and recover packs each day for quick, easy to use and conveniently accessible formulas to help you reach your peak without the deep supplement knowledge, stacks of bottles and complicated routine. Featuring eight different formulas for a total take on your health and wellness, you can find what you like and get even more powerful versions in the store. Head to InfoWarsStore.com and check out 8-Pack Power Stack today and jumpstart your supplement routine. Show them what a real alpha male looks like with one of our most powerful products ever made, Alpha Power, at 50% off. As you age, your body can lose testosterone over time. With the incredible ingredients in this formula, we can help you beat the test of time and assist in restoring that lost energy and mood that comes with time and age. Alpha Power's incredible ingredients can help you boost your sports performance or enhance your day-to-day -day life with ease while encouraging hormonal balance. Perfect by itself or with super male vitality in the true alpha male pack. Alpha Power can help boost performance, help maintain normal testosterone levels, support healthy cholesterol, and more. Let Alpha Power help bring you to the peak of your optimal health. Don't fall short on energy in the fight against tyranny. Show the world what a true alpha male looks like today with Alpha Power at 50% off only at the InfoWars store. Now, remember, I'm a little kid in grammar school, and we got to hate them Russians, all right? So they had air raid drills. They had us hiding under desks, frightened out of your mind, siren, all right, got under your desks. You had adults. These are called teachers. You want to know why the new... The, the education in this country stinks because if it was worth anything, you think we'd be in these problems if we had educated people? These are the morons that got kids going under the desk because they were stupid enough to believe the BS. <laughs> InfoWars, the most banned network in the world. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's great being on the Alex Jones Show. Thanks for having me. And all you folks, remember, do what you can to support InfoWars. Keep that buying those products. They're great and need your support. So what's going on? Well, you know, I've been on saying this for years. Uh, I've been buying gold since 1978. I was a youth. <laughs> Not quite, but pretty young. And here's the deal. All right, guys. Sorry about that. I had to go do something really quick. I've got uh, something on the stove, and I got to go. But I'm going to keep you guys updated on everything that's happening because we got a lot going on. We got a lot of irons in the fire to keep the the you know everything, all the tribes supplied here. So, you know, hopefully everything works out where we can keep doing this free, uh, you know, I'm, I'm putting a lot more things into this than you guys even know. So you guys just sit back and watch the whole un unfolding scenario that's going on in this world. But I tell you, it's orchestrated de definitely by the Most High. So let's just sit back and pray for our government, for our leaders, pray for our channel. We'll pray for you. And we'll talk to you guys soon. All right. God bless. I'll, I'll see you guys on the other side.